Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're talking about the resurrection accounts of Jesus. And we're in John's gospel, and we're really going to look at the last verses of chapter 20 and 21. Uh, last time we were together, Jesus was talking to Thomas and giving him the evidence he needed to believe, and then thought about us in the moment as well. John 20 really is the end of John's gospel proper. And then we have this story that is an epilogue. That doesn't mean it's an afterthought. That means that the structure of John's gospel is brought to an end, but then there's one more scene. And we're used to storytelling in that way. It's rare that you go to the movies, especially things that are episodic, where there isn't, as they're running the credits, another scene. Or after the, the, the denouement, after love's true kiss or after the bad guy is defeated or you know that we don't have another scene one more scene to show us what happened later and we had that in john's gospel um and and uh, it was it was a it was it was not a a common feature of storytelling but at the time like it is now we recognize it in a way that it would have been fresh to them to his first readers to have to have the rest of the story this way. So we do have in verses 30 and 31, um, kind of an end, well, the formal end to John's gospel. And then at the, at, the, at the epilogue, after the epilogue, we have a signature, but it's also an ending. It's, it's John signing. And I'm going to look at those four verses today. At the end of chapter 20, he writes, Many other signs, therefore, Jesus also performed in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So the structure, the story of, in, told in John's gospel proper uh, comes to an end by looking forward to me and you. Jesus mentions us. And then John speaks directly to us. Jesus says, blessed are they who haven't seen and yet believed. And then John is talking to the very people Jesus was speaking about. And John addresses us and he says, listen, there were more signs. In John's gospel, there are seven, seven signs. There are seven of them, seven being an important biblical number. And, and they begin with the marriage at Cana of Galilee and end with the raising of Lazarus. Those are the signs that Jesus performed during his public ministry. And John wants the reader to know there's so much more. But I've chosen these seven, these signs for a reason. These have been written that you may believe. <clears throat> he spent all of chapter 20 showing people receiving what they needed to come to faith. Whether it was seeing the tomb empty, whether it was entering the empty tomb, whether it was hearing Jesus speak your name, whether it was seeing him appear in the upper room or actually being invited to 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 handle his wounds whatever it was you needed to come to faith it was provided you in John 20 and John is saying to us now I'm providing this for you this is what I'm giving you so that you may believe I'm giving you these seven signs that you may believe that Jesus this guy from Nazareth with a common name like John, you know, uh, Yeshua, this guy, Jesus, that we knew, that Jesus is himself the anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ, the very Son of God. And that in believing this, in Jesus, human and divine, Jesus of Nazareth, Son of God, Messiah, that in believing in, 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 the, in, the, in the humanity and the divinity of Jesus, you may have life in his name. And all of these signs that Jesus performed, we experience simultaneously his humanity and his divinity. And, and that's by design. He's imprinting that on our consciousness and reading the gospel. Um, and then at the end, he says, this is what I've been doing. Uh, I want you to believe too in this specific identity of this guy we knew, Jesus of Nazareth. He was not just a guy from Nazareth. He was the fully human, fully divine Messiah and Son of God. And then he signs off. He gives us his signature in verses 24 and 25. Jesus has just been talking about a disciple to Peter. Um, and um, 
and it's the disciple Jesus loves. And, and this disciple is referred to in this way a few times in the gospel, but he's never named. John now is revealing that he himself, the author, is the disciple that Jesus loved. This is the disciple who bears witness of these things and wrote these things, and we know his witness is true. And therefore, and there, excuse me, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, which, if they were written in detail, I suppose the world itself would not contain the books which were written. Um, I love these verses. He's identifying himself as an eyewitness, as a truthful witness. And then he says again, there are many other things. And if if we wrote them in detail, if we talked about the events themselves and all that are implied and all that we learn from these events, the world would not contain, the world wouldn't be big enough. I don't think this is an exaggeration, hyperbole at all. I, I do think that we would run out of shelf space. It would, we cannot exhaust the topic of Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the Living God. We cannot. There's always more to be thought about, more to be, more to be understood, more to be read. Well, next time we're going to talk about um, this 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 epilogue, this last event, the great catch of fish, uh, redux that we have in chapter twenty-one, and um, and we'll pick up there next time.